Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be here. My name's Arthlene Rippey, and we've been around for a long time. And if you just discovered us today, welcome. Don't let it be the last time. And uh, I always like to thank you for contacting us. And I love reading your letters and you know, your emails. And uh, Stephanie and I were talking one day about uh, how impressed we are that people in this day and age take the time to sit down and type out a little email that encourage someone's heart, especially on Monday morning, you know, when I get here and somebody has sent an email of uh, just encouragement, boy, it means a lot. And so thank you for sending it my way, but let me kind of encourage you to just do it all day long for other people you meet. Um, so one thing we could really use in our culture and in our society, and that's a lot of encouragement. You'll be glad you tuned in today because I have an author with me. I love to uh, talk to authors because uh, usually there's a whole lot to talk about that's in their book. It's true today. Her name is Robin Bertram. She has written No Regrets. I know you're thinking right now, that's not possible. Well, I have, I was thinking about it when I was going through this book. Don't know if you could call them regrets, but you know, something that really bugs me from time to time is that I could have done certain things better. I've done a lot. I've been a minister of music and I've been a speaker and a lot of things like that and I always think could have done it better I want to talk to her about that and see if that's really you know a regret but I want to tell you about this book anybody involved in a small group uh, women's groups that kind of thing this would be a great study for any group so keep that in mind as uh, you meet her I met her just a few minutes ago and I'm going to join Stephanie for potato bacon chowder uh, boy, chowder is just as hearty as a full course, full course meal. Um, it can be, depending on what you put in it, and I think this would probably qualify. So we'll see how that tastes. Before I join her, though, I again invite you and ask you to join in supporting this program. And also thank you for those who do. You can do it a couple ways. Uh, a lot of people, like myself, I still write checks and send them in the mail. And some people like Stephanie use credit cards and bank cards and debit cards that uh, confuse me. So you can do it either way. If you use a card, 1-800-229-0059 or that address is simple, Box 6922. It's in Clearwater, Florida, 33758 where it's been very hot and rainy here, hasn't it? It has been muggy and hot and rainy is what it's been. And we're only in June, so... You could drown in the humidity. You could, yeah. yes. I yeah. take my dog for a walk at night, and by the time I'm done, I am just soaking <laughs> wet. And it's not from, like, I'm not running or anything. It's just from the humidity, and yes. my hair is usually out to here by then. And uh, What kind of dog do you <clears throat> have? Uh, she's a chocolate lab mix. That's a mutt. Kind of, well, no, she's more chocolate lab than anything. So, mm -hmm. But I love her. She's the smartest dog I've ever had in my life. I let me get the onions in. Let, yeah. I have bacon drippings in here. Hello, Southern Hello. Cooks. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put onions and celery in here and I let them that, cook while we talk. I heard that labs are very smart. Oh, my gosh. She's the smartest dog. When I came home from my surgery, mm -hmm. before that, she would jump on you. She would jump, you know, at least to get your attention. When I came, she would not she jump on that. me. She would not jump into the chair. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I, I was home, like, three or four days, she would crawl up into the chair and smart. lay with me like she was smart. it was crazy she's so smart yeah you know my dad <clears throat> he had my sister's poodle she left uh, Bridget was her name Aww. my dad died of cancer that dog would not leave him mm -hmm. stayed right on the mm -hmm. bed the day after the funeral my mother said come on Bridget let's go see daddy <laughs> she's going out to the cemetery that dog jumped out of the car, ran and sat on his grave. Stop it. See, dogs oh, are smart. just, she's just, uh, she's, she started out as my daughter's dog. You know, yeah, she had to have a puppy it, and yeah. everything. And then, and now she's my dog and, and Lexus isn't taking her when no. she leaves. She's not. So Lexus we've already discussed go, but that. Not the dog. Yeah, yeah. What's her name? Luna. Luna, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so we have onions, we have celery in here, and you're. Am I'm I gonna, supposed to do anything? You're just gonna like chop beautiful? up the bacon a little bit smaller for the top. <laughs> yep. So it look like I can do something. So yeah, because we want you to look like you're doing something. Yeah, I. <clears throat> trying out for the Food Network here. Right. So you want this to cook for a lot longer, but I'm gonna speed cook since we yeah. don't have a lot of time. Potatoes are already. So cooked. the potatoes are already cooked. Yep. And you can microwave potatoes and cut them up and 
or you can blanch mm -hmm. them or you know whichever is easiest for you and then I have milk. I have a cup and a third of milk. I have some sour cream. I have salt and pepper. And you need and all I that over there. And I have a can of a cream of chicken soup. Mm -hmm. That's going to add a little thickness mm -hmm. to it. So you want to... Here's your salt and pepper. Yep. Again, I am speed cooking. Please, yeah. please, please take your time when you're at home and let the flavors all... Okay. It's cold in here and everything is stuck together. So <clears throat> there we go. Pepper. There's the pepper. There's nothing like a good potato soup. Have a nice piece of bread with it. Oh, you know what we need to look up? Of course, we got viewers who help us a lot. Yes. What's the difference between a chowder and a soup? Good. Chowder's thicker, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure chowder's thicker. Okay, that was sour cream. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to get the recipe because I know I'm kind of... Um... Do you want the water next? or the... Sure, either one. You pour in water and milk. And I'm going to crank this baby up on high. Mm -hmm. We're going to let it sit for just for a minute and let it heat up. <clears throat> but at home, just let it simmer for a while. Let all those flavors marry together. This is super simple, but it's going to be really flavorful, I can tell. Uh-huh. Yeah. So just a few minutes. So did you have a dog growing up? Yeah, we had a, several dogs. Um, trying to think. We had one named Tallulah. It was a, a black oh, Cocker that's Spaniel. cute. And uh, Dewey, uh, you wouldn't remember this, but Thomas Dewey was always running for president. Okay. Um, and then my kids always had a dog. Nice. And there was this kid in the orchestra at Suncoast Cathedral when I was there, Minister of Music, and it's the cutest dog. And I, uh, this kid playing there, had a dog. And I said, you know, if you ever want to get rid of Charlie, I said, be perfect. That was my name till I was 13 years old. Did you know that, Charlie? <laughs> no, I didn't. You go. So. He's sitting in the orchestra several months later. He says, um, you can have Charlie if you want him. I tied him at your, ho at your house. Oh, <laughs> Charlie had grown. Because you lived like right there. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie had grown. What kind of dog was it? Oh, it was a mutt. It was a mixture. And he. You said you wanted him. <laughs> yeah. And so there was this little dog down the street that was in heat. And he, Charlie went right through the screen. The oh, no. Pool. I'm going to put some bacon and in here. And so uh, Charlie ended up on the farm. Oh, somebody's farm. Oh, I was going to say, I hope that's not you. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> he, okay, he actually ended up on somebody's farm. Yeah. Okay. Phew. No. <laughs> he, was, he was really funny, though. We lived across the street from the church, and the church people loved him. Yeah. I think there's nothing like a really good American mutt. Just, yeah. You know, oh, my you gosh. I just love having a hoity dog. Hoity-toity <laughs> thoroughbreds. But yeah, no. I know this isn't hot enough, but let me no, taste it. No, it's really it. not, but I'm going to... I will say it's beautiful. Put a little parsley on it. Yeah. And a little bacon, a little fresh bacon. Mm -hmm. And then just let the simmer, simmer, simmer for a yeah, while. Let real the flavors all get together and but I, have I a want relationship. my people to meet Robin. Yes. Oh, my. It's flavorful, right? Oh, that's a spiritual experience right there. Let's see. Let's see. Tell me. That is good. Was that may mayonnaise and there sour cream? Sour cream. That is right? rich. Yeah. Yeah, sour cream. Okay. That is delicious. All right. And it'll be really good once it really heats up. Yeah. And yeah. Delicious. But, uh, our show's only 30 minutes. So, yeah. Sorry. Right. Information's coming up on your screen. If you want a recipe, email us. Get it right out to you. Let me say this real quickly. If you don't get your email thing, it's because it's it threw back to us for some reason. There's a very small percentage that does that. But it, it does once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you write to us, be sure you send us an envelope with your name on it and your address and a stamp. And we'll get it out to you. And this is called Potato Bacon Chowder. Mm -hmm. And we'll get it right out to you. Stay with me. I want you to meet Robin and teach you how to have no regrets. Wouldn't that be great? That would be amazing. <laughs> if you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may send your email request to artheline at rippy.org. Or you may write to us at the address on your screen, and in doing so, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope. We thank you for being a part of our Homekeepers family. Okay, meet my new best friend. Uh, Rob Bertram, is that the way you pronounce yes. it? Welcome. Thank Welcome. you so much. I'm excited to be with you today. Well, 
Uh, I'm so glad to have you. Now, this is, this is your newest book. Yes. You've, you've written other books. June 6th, <laughs> release date. So it's, brand, it's brand, brand new. In fact, I got a galley of it. Somebody sent it to me, and so I got it before it was really printed, and I appreciate it. I don't know uh, of a book that would be much more important to uh, women. You get to a certain age, and you look back, and you know, and uh, you think you've got nothing forward, and you don't like backward and all, and uh, you really redeem, mm -hmm. redeem all of that. At the top of the program, I was talking about how I sometimes mull over that I could have done things better. Is that a regret? <laughs> Well, you know, when you said that, it really hit home to me because I remember a time, Arthleen, when my mother, I, I was uh, in conversation with her and I said something about not accomplishing a lot at that time in my life. And she stopped me in my tracks and she listed all the things that I had accomplished. And it, was, it shocked me. It's a good mother. <laughs> you know, it really shocked me because we tend to think of what we didn't do instead of what we mm -hmm. have done. And it was a real eye opener for me at that time. Uh, through the years, uh, being a Christian, as long as I can ever remember, you'll hear people say, oh, I wouldn't change a thing. And I keep thinking, I would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be a better daughter. I'd be a better sister. I'd be a better mother. I'd be a better wife. I'd be a better musician. I'd be a better everything. Absolutely. I could do it over. Absolutely. You know, we do tend to think of, of life in that manner, mm -hmm. what we could do in a, in a better way. But Apostle Paul said this, he said, forget what is behind and press Absolutely forward. Mm -hmm. What a simple statement, but how impactful. If we could learn to focus on the future instead of the past and use those things that we've done in the past as, as cobblestones, valuable lessons to learn from, it takes away all the regret. And look what Paul needed to forget. Yes. <laughs> yes. He was awful. <laughs> yes, he was. And that's something we don't think about either. He was a killer. Mm -hmm. He actually murdered Christians. So if you if you think, well, I've done too much. Now I'm feeling no, a little better. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am. Yes. I know, but what I said at the top of the show, there's so many women. And, and the way you have the chapters in here, what a great Bible study. I think of that little Christian that, that has, I don't like the term self-esteem. I, I don't think it's in the Bible. I've never seen it. But th that little Christian who has no sense of who she is in Christ um, and maybe her past, her whole history keeps her beat down. Boy, do you ever need this book. It's, it's, and it's not, a, um, it's not a motivational no. book. It's solid truth. No, and I really wrote the book with the basis of... A, learning how to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Because a lot of times we fall into the trap of looking at our life and what's gone on in the past or, or what, what we've done, what we haven't done. But when you really focus on Jesus, you learn to walk out a life that's impactful to others. Mm -hmm. And that really changes your whole perspective on your own life. Well, there's a couple things in the book though. Uh, you faced a debilitating, maybe you had a year to live, which would really make you think things through. But you also said your father, was he on his deathbed when he, he said, he was. I have no regrets. He was. Did that just shock you? Arthleen, that was really the motive behind the book. My father pastored 50 years. He had planted five churches. He sang across the country. He was not a perfect man, but he was a good man. He worked hard, loved the Lord. On his deathbed, he looked me in the eyes. I was 40 years old, and I thought, I have a ton of regrets. <laughs> and I thought, how can a man that's 84 years old possibly say that and really mean it? And I knew he meant it. Mm -hmm. So I started to look at his life, how he walked, how he cared for people, um, what, how deeply he loved people. And it really started to come together for me. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to live a life of value, a life well lived. And that was part of the reason for the book. I wanted to share with people what it means to live a, a life of value where you can get to the end of your days and you can say, I did it the right way. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, to all of those watching, um, right this moment is a new beginning. Yes. That's the wonderful thing about serving Jesus. He makes all things new. Absolutely. Second chances. Mm -hmm. If we believe in Jesus as our Savior, we've been given a second mm -hmm. chance at life. And all that's in our past is forgiven mm -hmm. and it's forgotten. And mm -hmm. that to me is exciting. Yeah. Now, what's it like to receive, uh, I guess you call it a death sentence. Yes. And um, you, you were given a year or two to yes, live, but the, two at the most, I think. Mayo Clinic um, gave me four diagnoses, took three off the table, left one on the table that gave uh, the expectation of a two-year life expectancy. So uh, they What's told it me, like to get that? Oh, goodness, it was scary. It was very scary. And I, I started to think about what I had in my hand that I could pass forward to the next generation. And this book is really about building a legacy, mm -hmm. living a legacy, and leaving a legacy. Because we don't even think about legacy. Mm -hmm. um, we don't think we're ever going to leave. We're th we think we're permanent fixture here in this world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you get that kind of diagnosis, when you're looking at life and the short um, time that you could potentially have, everything changes and everything Ooh. matters. I, I can only imagine, I'm at the age now where I find myself purposefully talking to grandkids and telling them about my dad and trying to you know, give them what I wish I knew yes. about my own uh, grandparents and all. But you've put some things in the book that were really eye-opening because when you get a, a death sentence, that that changes everything. Number one, I loved. Your husband's here right now. <laughs> did he read the book? Yes, he did. <laughs> okay, number one, she says, I didn't hold a husband hostage for shortcomings. <laughs> yes. I bet he thought, praise the Lord. Yes, because that's another thing we tend to fall into that the trap. Little, the little yes. pick, pick, pick stuff. Yes, yeah. the little things we don't want to let go of. And it's so easy to let that fester mm -hmm. and uh, or, or bring it up you know, bring up the shortcomings mm -hmm. in the midst of uh, mm -hmm. difficult times. Mm -hmm. And when I went through this, I absolutely decided not to hold that against my husband, any shortcomings. Mm -hmm. It's a powerful thing to make a decision to do. Yeah, and all you young brides, you know, start in on that. It's, yeah. it's, such, a, it's such a waste. It's a waste of emotion. It's a waste of... Uh, bonding. It's, it's just, yes. I, I remember I uh, used to speak for a lot of women's retreats and the first night I would say, okay, I want this to be the last night you ever have any kind of, of uh, pity party. Yes. Everyone. Yes. And also that what would it hurt? What would it cost you if you just went home and told your husband, thank you mm -hmm. for working so hard for the family? Nothing. But you know what a lot of women do? Well, I work too. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And well, and that's the other thing I talk about in the book, to take an inventory, look around in your life, and look at all the things you have to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. We forget to be thankful. Mm -hmm. And when we're not thankful, our heart is grieved. Mm -hmm. We're not enjoying life to the fullest capacity. Jesus said, I came to give life and life mm -hmm. more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of looking around around and saying, I have a lot to be thankful for. That, that year that you kind of had the death sentence over your head, that was really getting a doctorate in knowing Jesus and uh, knowing what's important and what's not. Yes, everything Had changes. to be a great blessing. Everything changes. Mm -hmm. You look at life uh, and take, you don't take things for granted. Mm -hmm. You you enjoy the smallest things. At the time when I went through the, the um, sickness, um, for about a year, I didn't know if I was going to get to walk down the aisle at my daughter's wedding, which was coming up. I didn't know if I was going to get to hold my first grandchild. Mm -hmm. And so those things, when you don't realize that that's a potential in your life, everything changes. And you take the time to value people yeah. more. And you want to sow into their life. And that's what this book is about. And when you, when you do that, you're going to have no regrets or certainly a whole lot fewer. 
Okay, but besides uh, being nice to your husband, <laughs> uh, you forgave family members. This is huge. Um, I, I think I got forgiveness. I think, I think I got that one understood yes. when the Lord really, I mean, I had to obey him or I would have gone nowhere uh, to forgive people who had wronged me. Yes. There wasn't a court in the land that would say, Arthelaine, you owe them an apology. But the Lord said, I look at your heart. And yes. now your, your heart's got a problem there. <laughs> and boy, I, I sucked it up. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I've learned I'm going to forgive you on the spot. I'm yes. not going to take it to bed. I'm just, that's it. So amazing how we bury it. Mm -hmm. And we, oftentimes we deny we even have an issue because we know better. Mm -hmm. You know, we really do know that we're to forgive. But um, when we're not pressed to do so, we tend to bury it. But when you go through a, a life um, cha a challenge like I went through, mm -hmm. The Lord uses it as a time of purification mm -hmm. and all that's packed in, all the things that we push so far down, He brings to the surface through a refinement process because He wants us mm -hmm. to look more like Him. And it's so worth it. It is so it's worth so it. It's so worth it. Joy. Yeah, uh, because uh, ladies and gentlemen, if, if you haven't understood that, boy, your kids pick it up. Yes. They pick up all that. Um, negative stuff. If you've just joined me, I'm talking to Robin Bertram. She is the author of No Regrets. We have the website on the screen. You can get the book through that. I'm sure you can get it through other outlets. And I mentioned at the top of the show, but if you just joined us, I really do recommend this for, uh, for a Bible study. I think, I think you, the way you've outlined it, uh, it's, it's easy to follow and it is so relevant. Thank you. It is so very relevant. Okay. Um, you put a great emphasis on prayer and uh, also one on uh, character. And uh, you kind of chose David and Saul as examples, uh, which great examples. Yes. Yes. Well, I thought about Saul because a lot of us face the same issues he faced. He was jealous he was fearful of man. Mm -hmm. um, and those are two things that are destiny killers and they're joy killers. If you fall into those traps of being fearful of me man or jealous of other people, you can't possibly mm -hmm. reach the destiny and call that God has placed on your own life. Mm -hmm. So I really spent time in the book to define what that looks like to give up those things so that you can be effective for God's kingdom. It's a good thing too, maybe to ask yourself, uh, because we rationalize so much, but just ask yourself, am I jealous of yes. that person? Yes. When uh, you sit and pick them apart and it's a good time to just sit and think about it. Maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> Absolutely. Apostle Paul taught us in 1 Corinthians 13 that love is patient. It is kind. Mm -hmm. It is not jealous. Mm -hmm. And we think about that as the love um, between a husband and a wife, but really he was teaching the church how to love one another. And that's a powerful tool. When you look at that one scripture, four through eight, and you focus in, it's a beautiful explanation of what love is. And that, that's really, uh, really what it, it's all about. And another point, there's so many great points in this book. Uh, you really uh, would do yourself a favor to get it and read it. And that is, um, we're always wanting those from the outside to do this and support us and all. You bring in one of my favorites, and that's uh, David, when he encouraged himself. Yes. In the Lord. <laughs> yes. So what if there's no one there? You know, you look in the mirror and say, I know Jesus, and you're yes. encouraged. We need that. We need to know that we can do that. We can encourage ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the book is really written uh, with intentional biblical living mm -hmm. so that we can define how we want our days to look like. I love the word intentional. Yes. Um, I think in our culture a lot, well, you know, let's go with the flow and let things happen and all. But if, if you're going to follow the Lord, 
you have to intend to do it and stick with it because everything is going to come against you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was looking for that. Uh, I wrote it down somewhere uh, with David because I've always, uh, well, the people wanted to kill him. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, everything was falling apart. His wives had been taken away and it said that the people wanted to stone him. Yes. <laughs> But he encouraged himself in the Lord, so yes. none of us can really yes. relate to that. Well, you know, we but we do we do relate to the fact that David was in a position where he was always under pressure mm -hmm. by Saul. He was on the run, but yet he chose, Arthlene, he chose to honor the man that God put in that position. Yeah. And I think how would our lives look like if we could just follow that simple yeah. model, honor people, treat them the way God sees mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. It will change your whole focus in your life. Yeah, and there's, what do you lose? when you're, Right. <laughs> uh, our right. time is running out, but I want to get to, I think one of your uh, last points, and that is my one of my favorite scriptures, John the 15th chapter. When you abide in Him, yes. you stay there. Yes. You just remain. You stay there. Yes. And I think that's a beautiful way to live your life. When you decide, I'm going to live my life, that uh, a life that honors God. I'm going to abide in His presence. I'm going to set before Him every day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let Him be my God, my counselor, my comforter. When we have that kind of attitude, mm -hmm. Arlene, we can't be focused on the mess that's happened in the past mm -mm. because we're looking forward instead of backwards. And I think that's a real powerful way to live your life. Mm -hmm. And again, the name of the book is uh, No Regrets. And God's not going to give you amnesia. That would be nice, <laughs> but <laughs> He doesn't right. because He redeems yes. all of these things. He does. And when you look back, you see someone that's it's not who you are today. And that's what God sees. He sees your heart today. Mm -hmm. So look forward and not look back. Oh, I mean, it's been such a delight to have you. I hope that uh, viewers will really uh, take advantage to get the book. And uh, just let me just let me remind you that I'm still learning. I'm still learning more about Jesus, and and I've got eight great grandchildren. I'm not young, but you can never learn enough about him or keep pressing forward to be like him and i encourage you to do that and i'll join you next time please remember there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper god bless you if you should miss a homekeepers program you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com click on ctn programs and then on homekeepers